Hey guys, Rainer and Shades here, Exercise My First Amendment Rights Vlog Style, here with another unboxing video. This one comes from none other than my YouTube daddy, Cover Killer Nation. Now, Cover Killer Nation is a guy that needs no introduction. A lot of people that are subscribed to me, I'm sure, are also subscribed to him because we make very similar videos. I've been following Cover Killer Nation as far back as late 2012, I think that's when I started watching him, and he, along with Muse Productions, basically was like the other like key influence on the kinds of videos I make and what I talk about here. This is like when I was right on the brink of creating this channel and I was searching on YouTube for videos about metal elitism because you know this was something that I wanted to talk about on this channel and his was like one of the first videos I found. It was a video of his called Be a Fan Not an Elitist and I thought the video was amazing. I subscribed immediately and then went on a little binge sampling some of his content. Usually I don't subscribe to somebody until after I sample a bit of their content, after I see a video I like, but with Cover Killer Nation, it was not the case. I subscribed like right away after that one video. I knew right away that this was a guy that I was gonna like. And ever since then, he's basically become somebody that I connect well with. We have a lot of similar opinions and similar ideas and whatnot. So, it makes sense that, you know, a lot of people compare me to him. Like, I've been compared to people like Razor Fist, and just today I was actually compared to the Double Agent, but Cover Killer Nation is the guy I get compared to the most, not just because we wear sunglasses in our videos, but, you know, like I said, we have similar ideas, we make somewhat similar videos. I mean, of course, his videos aren't exactly the best edited, but he is getting better with his editing. He's been getting better with his editing, I should say. So, I get people saying, like, I'm Cover Killer Nation's son and whatnot, hence the YouTube daddy thing. Him and I are also pretty friendly with each other. I added him on Facebook sometime in 2013, and we didn't really become really friendly with each other until a couple years later in 2015 when he also became acquainted with guys like Official GATG and Atticus the Death Meddler, and it was around that time that I needed some people to partake in my uh, dramatic reading of Metal Elitist comments because a few of the people I wanted to have be a part of that were dropping out or saying that they couldn't do it. Stout actually suggested that I bring CKN aboard, and ever since then we've been, you know, pretty friendly with each other. And it was because of that that I appeared in his Heavy Metal Holidays finale video, where I promoted my boys Valence and became friendly with them as a result of that. Yeah, 2015 was a really big year for me on YouTube. So enough about that, let's talk about this package that I got. So, if you follow CKN on Facebook, you'll know that he's doing a huge giveaway of CDs. He's basically just trying to make some space in his collection, so he's unloading a bunch of CDs that he has, and I decided to help him out here because, you know, I want to give a little something back because he's a guy that, you know, influenced me so much. And so I picked out some names that I saw on this list because, you know, a number of the names on this list did jump out at me, and you'll see a, a couple of them in uh, this box. Unlike the first unboxing I did from uh, Stevie Rochelle of Tough and Metal Sludge, I actually know what's in this package, so apologies if I don't give you much of a genuine um, reaction and whatnot. Some of the other names that I saw on this list were names that I was surprised he was wanting to give away, like, wow, you're really giving this away? But regardless, you know, it felt nice helping him offload from his huge collection because from what I understand, his CD collection is giant. One thing I should also mention is that the albums I'm going to be showing you are albums that I do already have content from in my iTunes library, but a, I guess, dream or goal that I have for myself is to one day have enough money to be able to buy every single album that I own content from on CD and just have a huge fucking array of shelves decked out in fucking CDs and just have everything just be accessible like that. That is a goal that I have for myself and I guess this is a good way to get started. So with that in mind, let's get started opening this. I want this to be in frame. Ah, Jesus. All right, so what are we? This I was not expecting to get. I don't know what this is. Drum up some ideas. Includes a notepad, two pencils, and an eraser, so it looks like this is a notepad. I was not expecting to get this, but wow, okay. This I was not expecting to get either. 
Rock the Holidays. I guess this is a heavy metal Christmas compilation. What do we got here? Okay, it doesn't look like, looking at the track list, it doesn't look like these are actually, you know, like Christmas songs, like the cover is implying. We got As I Lay Dying, Saves the Day, Bless the Fall, Close Your Eyes, AWOL Nation, My Morning Jacket, Misfits, 311, Tom Morello, Skeleton Witch, Jeffrey Nothing, Blue October, Aiden, Charred Walls of the Damned, Carnifex, 6AM, Carolina Liar, Cottonmouth King, Primus and Anthrax. So, very weird array of different artists on this. I guess this is an FYE like collection. <laughs> okay, so not all of these are names I recognize. Most of these names I know. Okay, um, Jog of Final? Is that what this says? This looks like it's some um, promo, I guess. And on the back we got, I believe this is Cataclysm on the back. This looks like a sticker. Radio, alternativemusic.com. Alternative music from its origins to today. This is a The Who postcard. <laughs> Gee, a, a lot of this random stuff I was not expecting to be part of this package, but I guess you are getting a genuine reaction after all. Ooh, and there's other postcards here. We got one of Ozzy, which this looks like the photo from the Black Rain cover. Kings of Leon. Another sticker it looks like, Idol Records. Another sticker, Dashboard Confessional, sweet. Ooh, here's a band I haven't thought about in a while, Sugar Cult. Um, I love how it says on the back here, um, debut CD in stores August 2001. How old is this? <laughs> and finally, before we get to the actual CDs, it looks like we got some Guitar picks, these feel really thin. I wouldn't be surprised if these weren't actually guitar picks, but they are of 10 years. From Birth to Burial, which is the name of uh, 10 years' album from 2015. And here are the designs on the back here. Okay, now to get to the actual CDs, the stuff that I knew was gonna be a part of this. And I'm gonna talk about all these albums because that's what I do on here. I talk about music like a dork and you guys listen and you know, you seem to find that interesting. Here's what we got first. Arch Enemies, Doomsday Machine. This album's from 2005. It's their third album with Angela Gasso, their sixth album overall. Definitely an album from the Gasso era that I do enjoy. I mean, we got songs on here like uh, Nemesis and uh, Taking Back My Soul, My Apocalypse, Mechanic God Creation. Those are, you know, some of the tracks that I like on this one. So if you're a fan of Gasso era Arch Enemy, this is definitely an album I'm sure you probably dig. Out of the Arch Enemy albums that I like, this is my th third favorite in the ranking. My favorite is Anthems of Rebellion with Wages of Sin being a very close second. Then uh, Doomsday Machine probably comes after that. Next we got the self-titled album from Cartel, a name that really jumped out at me when I was looking at the list. Like, wow, Cartel? Cartel, if you've never heard of them, they're a mid-2000s pop-punk band, and this is their second album from 2007. On this album, we got cool tracks like Lose It and No Subject, Come With Me, Wasted, The Fortunate. Uh, those are a few of the tracks that I dig from this album. Cartel's a pretty good band. I didn't get into them until back in 2016. I didn't even know who they were until then. Next we have the debut album from a band that I actually got introduced to by CKN himself. This band would be Crobot. And this is their debut, Something Supernatural. Like I said, I have CKN to actually thank for uh, introducing me to this band because he featured this album in his Best Albums of 2014 video, and I thought to myself, wow, he's speaking really highly of this. I should probably uh, look into this. And that was also the same way I got into both Kill or Be Killed and, of course, Nabel of Ascaris from that same video. So with this, this is one of the ones that I was, you know, mentioning how, wow, you're actually giving this away? Because I remember him speaking pretty highly of this in his uh, best albums of 2014, but cool, it's in my possession now. My favorite tracks on this one include Nowhere to Hide, Cloud Spiller, Queen of the Light, Tap Dancing on a Tightrope, and Skull of Geronimo is also a pretty good one. Yeah, overall, not a bad band. Next, another name that kind of jumped out at me that he would even have in his collection. Not that I think the band is bad by any means, but here is Daughtry with Break the Spell. This is Daughtry's third album from 2011. And unfortunately, uh, this year, from what I'm hearing, the album that Daughtry put out this year is not 
great. It's one of these, you know, I call it going down the Maroon 5 route or the Fallout Boy route, where they basically are just popifying the shit out of their sound, and it sounds nothing at all like their uh, first three albums, which are the ones I do like. And, you know, out of all the, you know, American Idol people, people that um, got their name out from being on American Idol, Chris Daughtry is, without a doubt, my favorite to come from there, because he actually has a cool sound, a good voice. Overall, I like what he does with Daughtry. The first three albums, I think, are enjoyable post-grunge hard rock albums. One thing that I find, like, really interesting about the story of Chris Daughtry and his rise to fame was he didn't even win uh, the season on American Idol that he was on. And from what I remember, people were like really pissed about that. People were like outraged that he didn't go on to be like one of the finalists. The guy that won that season was Taylor Hicks, a guy that I'm sure none of you guys even remember. Like, I know who Taylor Hicks is. I like some of his music, but as far as, you know, who actually stood the test of time, more people know who Chris Daughtry is than Taylor Hicks, despite Taylor Hicks fucking winning. And that same season, you also had Catherine McPhee, another name that I recognize. And yet here's Taylor Hicks, the guy who won, and the last I heard from him, he was playing this really small venue, like, in my area of mass. Like, that was literally the last time I had ever heard anyone mention him, and I'm like, wow, how do you go from winning on American Idol to playing at a small venue like this? And meanwhile, Chris Daughtry here goes on to become, like, a household name. But yeah, this is Daughtry's uh, third album, and we have um, Renegade, Crawling Back to You, Out of My Head, Start of Something Good, We're Not Gonna Fall. Like I said, overall, pretty good album. Next, another name that jumped out at me, L.A. Guns with Hollywood Vampires. This is their third album from 1991. This was, of course, the year that glam was basically on its decline because 1991, of course, is the year that Nirvana came out with Nevermind and things just started to be awkward. I mean, there were still some pretty good albums coming out around the 91, 92 period in the glam world as we saw in the Best Glam Metal Bands You Never Heard Of video. But still, it was a weird time to say the least. And this was also the last album that LA Guns did with their classic lineup before they became my go-to reference for bands that tour simultaneously in two different lineups, two different revolving door lineups, I should add. LA Guns just went on to become so freaking inconsistent and weird with their lineup after um, the fact. But recently, um, Phil Lewis, the singer, and Tracy Guns, the guitarist, they're working together again. I think they came out with a new album recently, but yeah. Hollywood Vampires is uh, their third album, and it's a pretty good one. My favorite song from LA Guns is actually on this album, Kiss My Love Goodbye. It is a catchy jam. And you also have cool songs like Over the Edge, Some Lie, For Love, Crystal Eyes. Another thing about LA Guns is, uh, if you're a fan of Guns N' Roses, you should probably know who LA Guns are, because Tracy Guns was the guns in Guns N' Roses. Guns N' Roses was actually a fusion of two bands, L.A. Guns and Hollywood Rose, which was the band that Axl Rose had. They joined up together and decided, why don't we fuse our bands together, and they morphed their names to create Guns N' Roses. But then Tracy Guns left and restarted L.A. Guns and had some moderate levels of success in their own right. But meanwhile, Guns N' Roses, they got Slash and Duff and Steven Adler, and they came out with Appetite for Destruction and became household names. And LA Guns, like I said, they weren't like a no-name band, but they weren't like Guns N' Roses successful. Next, we got an album that I was surprised to see in the list because of just how big the album is, how popular it is, along with how popular the artist who recorded this album is, and this would be Marilyn Manson's Antichrist Superstar. I never noticed a lot of this small shit on the cover. It's, it's like, it says over here, heart, mind, complacent, malice. Um, right there, you can see. And this was Manson's second album from 1996. And I'm sure everybody watching this knows this album and knows who Manson is. You know, I don't need to go on any backstory spiel and whatnot. You know how big this album is. It's got the beautiful people. Jesus. Um, along with a irresponsible hate anthem and 
dried up, tied and dead to the world, and uh, 1996, and The Reflecting God, and Man That You Fear. Good album from uh, Manson's. It's one of my favorites. I'm not gonna act like I'm the hugest fan of Marilyn Manson. I think he makes some decent music, and I have some respect for him as a person. There are people that I know that are super into Manson's music that are more into him than I can really say about myself. And Antichrist Superstar is right up with Mechanical Animals and Golden Age of Grotesque as far as uh, my favorite albums of his go. Next, another popular name, Protest the Heroes Kezia. This is their debut full length, uh, their second overall release after uh, an EP they put out in 2003, A Calculated Use of Sound. This one came out in 2005, and I recently saw Protest the Hero live um, back in April after so many years of waiting for them to do a headlining tour coming through my area of the country, and that was for the 10 year anniversary of the next album that they made after this, Fortress. Fortress is my favorite of Protest's albums. This is my second favorite. The tracks I like from this include uh, Heretics and Killers, Divinity Within, Bury the Hatchet, Nautical, and uh, A Plateful of Our Dead. Really good material. Protest is a fucking brilliant uh, prog metal band. Next, we got Sacred Reek with The American Way. This is their second full-length album, their third overall release, coming out in 1990. And they are one of my favorites of the late 80s thrash scene, and they're pretty good. They're a thrash band that usually uh, sticks out in my mind first whenever I think of thrash metal. One of my 4th of July traditions is I play the song Rock America by Danger Danger. Another song that I'll play is the title track from this, which is one of my favorites. Other tracks that I like from this include uh, Love, Hate, The Way It Is, Crimes Against Humanity. That's about it for my favorites. The other tracks are pretty good too. Oh, I found more random stuff. What do we got here? Um, Knuckle Duster. It links their Facebook and their Twitter. Um, Knuckle Duster Metal. So I'll look them up after I'm done recording. Maybe I'll like what they have. Maybe their sound won't appeal to me, but I encourage you guys uh, to do so yourself and see if the sound appeals to you. Cause just because it m might not appeal to me doesn't mean I don't think you'll enjoy it. Next, got another sticker here. Um, the pretty cool picture here. Hypnotic? Dirge Records. Oh wow! It said this. It literally said the same thing down here, and I just tried to read the fucking logo. Wow! And finally, we got a pen. The Black Eyed Peas. Are you serious? <laughs> this is the most random thing. The Black Eyed Peas. The most random name I was not expecting to see in this. I mean, Black Eyed Peas have some catchy, guilty pleasures like Don't Funk With My Heart, Pump It, Where Is The Love, and of course, um, Let's Get It Started, ha! But yeah, I don't really like what any of them do on their solo stuff, like Fergie I just think is atrocious, and Will I Am is just annoying on his own. But I'm willing to admit they came out with some decently entertaining stuff when they were a group in the early 2000s. Back to CDs, the next album we got is the Scorpions, Face the Heat. This album came out in 1993, probably the most awkward time to be a uh, glam metal band, because 93 you don't really associate with glam, I mean, there were some pretty good albums from glam metal bands that came out in that year, this album being one of them, along with albums like Winger's Pull, Poison's Native Tongue, Mr. Big's Bump It, Enough is Enough's Animals with Human Intelligence, Vince Neil's Exposed. But 93, it was the year I was born, and a year that is just not really associated with glam stuff. But this album did get some recognition. It's pretty underrated in the Scorpions' uh, discography. I don't really hear very many people talk about it compared to uh, albums of theirs like Love of Fear's Sting, or Blackout, or Animal Magnetism, or even Love Drive. The tracks I like on this one include um, Alien Nation, No Pain No Gain, Under the Same Sun, which I like the song as a ballad even though it's kind of them basically trying to rewrite um, Wind of Change with the whole, you know, happy, hippie, lovey, let's join hands together kind of thing. Woman is another really haunting ballad. Then there's uh, Hate to be Nice, another one that I like. This is also the last drummer that uh, Herman Rarebell played drums on, so 
that's also noteworthy about this. And look how bright these colors are. I don't know if I like or hate it, but it kind of jumps out at me, just this metal band and whatnot with albums that don't normally feature colors this bright, and here we see just like bright white, orange, yellow and whatnot. It's strange. And the last album that we got in here is the self-titled album from Whitney Houston. Another name that kind of jumped out at me is like, wow, you're giving this away? Because, you know, with a name as big as Whitney Houston and a pop artist as respected as Whitney Houston, it just doesn't seem like a name you'd want to get rid of from your CD collection, even if you're not really a huge fan of pop. But Whitney Houston is one of my favorite pop artists. Like, if Michael Jackson is the king of pop, Whitney Houston is definitely the queen of pop. But this is her debut album from 1995. She was already going places. Like, there are some tracks that are pretty popular in her uh, discography, like um, You Give Good Love, Thinking About You, Saving All My Love For You, How Will I Know, and uh, Greatest Love Of All. Those are like uh, some of the better known stuff on here. Obviously her later albums would have some of her more bigger hits and whatnot, but you know, if you're a fan of you know her style and her music, you know, this is a pretty good album to look at. And I do think overall she was a great artist and a great singer and, you know, again, just one of my favorite artists in the realm of pop music. And that was me ripping off Leo Maracchioli. <laughs> so to CKN, thank you very much for uh, sending me this stuff. Thank you for being so good to me over the last few years. You're awesome. And I'm glad I was able to help you offload from your collection and bring it down to a more manageable size. And to everyone else, thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and have a nice day. I'm Shades and I'll see you next time.